Team five, when you're ready. All right, guys, uh, we are here representing Chipotle, and we are Team Five Communications Logistics Corps. Uh, we have Sue and myself, Sagar. Uh, we're supporting our leaders over here. We have Alec and John. They'll be taking taking lead on this. At the start, we want to welcome our crowd today. We got some media representatives with, along with our board members, and some uh, sprinkled in stakeholders as well. Um, and to start, we got Sue. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the food from earlier. Uh, I, I overheard many people mentioning the word you call that while scooping themselves some salsa and guacamole. <laughs> uh, so how many of you guys have heard about the re most recent food safety issue? Okay. So how many people feel safe and comfortable eating at Chipotle? Okay. That's pretty good. Um, this is a graph of the share price movement for Chipotle between August 2015 and uh, December 2016. So over here on the left, you can see that uh, the stock opened at $719.79 on August 21st. And over here uh, on December 12, 2016, they opened at $375.31. So how did the company manage to lose almost half, half of their uh, stock share value uh, in a little over a year. Um, as you may have guessed, it is due to many, many uh, outbreaks. And every time the stock experienced significant drop after every high profile food safety scare. Over here we have the E. coli outbreak in October, and then norovirus in December, and then another E. coli within the same month, and another norovirus a few months after. And these are just, <laughs> and these are just some of the major ones that were reported. Uh, and then in their latest food safety crisis, uh, there is over 650 people reported having gastrointestinal problems after dining at a restaurant in Ohio, and then the CDC test confirmed that it was due to a common bacteria that occurs when food is kept at an unsafe temperature, and the stocks tumbled over 8% within 24 hours. All right, and so what was Chipotle's response? We're here to tell you what kind of they did right, maybe what could they could have done better, and what they can do to hopefully in the future prevent this kind of thing from happening, and to instill some sort of confidence back into our, our followers. So what happened? As soon as they clearly learned from their lesson, and as soon as they got word of this, they closed down that, that store as fast as possible. As soon as they got word, they loaded, they, I also have had practice notifying the local health department, and they've got a immediate message and response from leadership enforcing how critical the situation was and how important it was. And using that kind of information, CEO Brian Nickel really put some really aggressive wordage into his response. He did some interviews, and he really hit home how important it was to not only him personally, but the company. He made it seem like he was personally invested in the health of the people that went to his stores. Chipotle has a zero tolerance policy. It's not okay that anybody gets sick at their stores, he said. And also, they really made sure that they followed proper procedure and submitted everything they could to the local departments of health, which is very important in that department's ability to react and help these people. So then we move on move on to the secret menu. Every restaurant has a secret menu, but today we're going to tell you guys about the communication burrito that's on the secret menu. And we're going to dive into some of the ingredients from the last earnings call, the Q2, which I'm sure everyone here has heard or read the transcript. And we're going to dive in and I want to break down the good and the bad of the strategic strategy that was put into that call by Brian Nichols specifically. So, at first, when you walk into Chipotle, you always get white or brown rice. But here, you have rank, goodwill, expertise, you have image, and you have common ground. These are all a part of the communicator strategy. 
But what I'm trying to dive into here is credibility, because I wanted to relate to the audience that Brian Nichols is trying to bring in Chipotle. So he said in the earnings call that things I said last month bring the win today. That win is the economic model, which brings the rank, because they're at the top of the game when it comes to fast, casual dining. You have brand loyalty, which goes into the goodwill, because even though you guys have heard the news, you still would like to partake in Chipotle. You have the expertise. Because now they're the leader of the pack and so many other casual restaurants are trying to duplicate what they have already done, they're moving into the digital space now. They're compounding on that expertise into new innovations. And then it goes to hospitality. They still want to offer quality food. They still want to make sure that food is clean. Um, and then you move into the common ground. And that's the cultural innovation, because they know that people in society, they want to see new ideas and fresh ideas be integrated into their business model. That's what they're doing there. And in the earnings call, he talk, oh, oh, sorry. And in the call, he talks about the Big Fix Initiative, the, the university, the new hospitality training earnings pass. He brings up all these milestones. These are all different trainings that go from the regional managers down to the store employees about how to give great customer service. The bad and it is that there's no statistical backup to substantiate the acquired credibility. This is all initial credibility here. He could have done a better job with putting some data behind it that didn't have to be financial. So then we move on to choose responsibly raised audience strategy. So who is the audience for Chipotle? The audience for Chipotle is seen as fast casual diners, 42% millennials, 44% have a household income over $40,000, $75,000. A lot of men, and everyone is on the go. They're very busy, which is great. So that's what he's diving into. Um, and then he brings up that 33% growth digital sales, 65%. I mean, you see the data, but the lack of audience strategy for the key influencers is lacking. Because this is the primary audience, those millennials. The secondary audience is kind of being touched on there. But in the Jeremy Jordan fiasco, that was the actor back in 2015 that got sick, went viral, and it brought their stock tumbling down. He was one of the ones that started it. He could do a little bit better with bringing in those key influences and addressing that audience also. Okay, and for the ingredients, the toppings on the end. So what does he have in this burrito? In this burrito of communication, he has the sour cream, obviously, which is the organizing this message, because he did. He delivered clear points. He delivered those milestones, even though it didn't have the meat behind it. And he did a decent blend of channel communication. He had some written, some oral, which was this earnings call, but no bluff. He didn't start with the conclusion. Most of the things I read to you, he didn't bring up the fact about millennials or the access to Chipotle with the delivery and things like that, those kind of innovations. He didn't bring that up until the end of the earnings call. No chunking. With the overcoming of retention, he brought up so many milestones and kind of got lost. He would have been better just making it a cohesive message, touching on it, putting a stack to it, and then moving on. He had no stories that he could really tell to bring in the audience, and it was too much CFO talk. During the end of the entire earnings call, the CFO mainly took over for the entire bout and the stock was declining as the CEO was speaking. Great, so let's talk about creating a long-term plan. How do we as Chipotle move forward and win the future? It starts with rebuilding trust in the public and growing a company for the future. To do that, we have to step one, comply with all federal and local regulations and regulators. So that's important. But let's dive into the strategy. So when we win the future, we're gonna do four important things. We're going to improve customer trust with increased safety, that's number one. Number two is we're gonna increase our product offerings. Everybody loves what we already have right now, the burrito, the bowls, the salsa, but we're going to expand that. We're gonna show you how we're gonna do that. We're also going to win customers with promotions. That's been very key. We've been very successful this year. We're gonna tell you about that. And we're also going to innovate with technology. So first off, let's talk about improving customer trust with the increased <laughs> safety. We've got an eight-step synergistic plan where we integrate many things to prioritize food safety. That's got to be job number one. Quarterly food training, increased inspections, increased technology, things like vacuum sealed packages, air purification. This is going to reduce viruses. This is going to reduce bacteria. 
Now we go next to increasing our product offering and changing by extending our hours. Things like bacon, nachos, late night menu and hours. How about $2 tacos with a drink after 8 p.m.? How about stores open till 11 p.m.? So now you can hit Chipotle before you go out or you hit a movie, then you can hit Chipotle. We're making it a cool, hip, fun place to come and eat at. Quesadillas, that was a secret menu item. We're now gonna hit it with the normal menu. Avocado tostada, Mexican chocolate milkshakes. Fun, expansive, forward-looking. Now, we're talking about winning customers with promotions. Been super successful this year in doing so. Let's talk about some examples. DoorDash promotion, May 2018. Deliveries popped 7x when we gave free deliveries over $10. Free guacamole promotion. Who doesn't like guacamole? Sales up 60% when we did that. That's a premium item. How about a buy one, get one promotion we did last month for the school opening? Most entrees, burritos, or bowls sold ever. And now, remember that the promotions are designed to do two things. We want to get new customers, but because of what happened with the whole E. coli situation, we want to get back those existing customers, those previous customers, who kind of got scared away, but are right there and waiting for a reason to jump back into or eating at Chipotle. Finally, let's talk about innovating with technology. A couple key things that we're doing right now. The Chipotle app. Order on your phone, you're on the go, boom, 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 you don't have to wait in line. You order it, it's ready, you pick it up, you're good, you're good to go. Because remember, our demographic, they're busy, they're on the go, we want to facilitate their lifestyle. Digital ordering online. Digital sales were up 33% last quarter. DoorDash delivery partnership, we talked about that. And now in 2019, we're gonna launch a loyalty program. So with that, I'll close down our presentation for Team 5. I'm John Villarreal, Alec, Cigar, and Sue. We'd like to thank you and open the floor for your questions. Thank you, John. Thank you, John, Team 5. All right. I know. <laughs> All right, uh, feel free to grab a seat. I want to just firstly thank you on behalf of the class for providing nourishment, yes. sustenance. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. Uh, I have elected not to eat that, so I have no added incentive to provide grades. All right. uh, but I, I hope everyone will indulge fully. 